Howdy folks! Today we're going to go over a couple of common issues that people run into deploying an application to Heroku and what to do to fix those issues. So right here I've got a pretty standard um, application. I've got my SQLize connection here, got some controllers, got an API. I'm only doing um, a create user API just for simplicity, but you can see I'm using JWT, um, I'm using cookies, I've got, um, I'm using handlebars, I've got an auth middleware that will automatically redirect me to the login page if I'm going to home. You know, all stuff that we've covered already. Um, schema here for local testing, here's my middleware. You see, pretty simple, it just redirects the login if there's a failure. Uh, we've got the user model, um, pretty simple, it just says username and password, it uses bcrypt to encrypt the password. And I've got my views, home, which just doesn't have anything on it because there's nothing there. And then login, which is a very simple form that just has the username and password and the sign up button. And then we have um, our server JS, which is also kind of simple. We're using cookie parser, we've got our port, we've got SQLize routes, we're setting up handlebars, setting up our um, middlewares, setting up our routes, and then we're doing our listen. So. Um, I have deployed this to Heroku already uh, because I already have a video on that. But let's say you've now you've got to this point, you've deployed your app to Heroku um, right here. I call it Bucky Test App. And I'm going to open it and it says application error. Oh no. So you can run this command in your terminal um, if you want to get the logs in your terminal. Um, what I usually do is if you go over to the more here. You can click on view logs. And a lot of times your logs look like this. Process changed from starting to crash, process exited, and I can tell there's the top of an error trace here, but Heroku only saves the last 10 logs for me. So what I need to do is while on this page, I need to restart my server so that I can get the full error log of what happened. So if I go over to more and you click restart all dynos, Restart all dynos. This is okay. This may result in a brief downtime. Well, the application is crashed. So it's okay that we're going to have some downtime. Restart, and you can see it immediately says change from crash to starting. Starting process with npm start. And immediately I see here's the error. SQLize connection refused error. Now, if you see this, especially with this 127001, that should be your first, your first clue of what's going on. And the problem is, in my code... I've got my .env, right, with my local host, as my DB host, all that stuff, and I've set it up here. The problem is SQLize does not know what any of these things are. SQLize on, or sorry, on Heroku. SQLize on Heroku does not have access to my local database. I need to actually create a database in Heroku for my application to connect to, and we'll see how to do that. So. Now I've got this, I can see that issue. If I go over here to resources, you can do add-ons. Now Heroku manages these add-ons for you and that's one of the big selling points they have. There is a Heroku database. Um, they do have their own database. It is no longer free as they keep reminding us, but you can use it if you want. It is a Postgres database and we've been using MySQL so I'm not going to use it for now. What I am gonna do is I'm gonna type in clearDB. ClearDB is a MySQL database. So what I did there, um, ClearDB, and if I click on this little panel here, it's gonna pop up a little initialization card here for me to use. ClearDB has an Ignite plan. They have some also very expensive plans. Don't pick this one. The Ignite plan is free. It's a very small amount of data, but if you're just doing a test project for maybe one or two users, you're probably not gonna use that much data. So this should be fine. Um, if you want to look at it in more detail and see what you get, you can click on this link here, view add-on details, and that will give you some more information. So I'm going to click submit order form, click it only once. It takes a minute to go away, and even if you click it, it doesn't really show that you've clicked it. If you click it multiple times, you will end up with multiple clear DBs here. If that happens, just click this little thing here and delete the add-on until you only have one. So now that I've got this clear DB MySQL, everything's going to work, right? Not exactly, because see, in our um, 
our process env here, we're looking for these four fields. And Clarity View doesn't handle things that way. It actually gives us something different. So if we go to settings, reveal config vars, you can see it's created a new one. Now Heroku manages this for us. That's kind of nice because that means that if your application is up for six, seven months, it actually rotates the password for you as well. Which, you know, you're probably not going to care too much about, but it's just a good thing to know that they manage this value for you. You don't have to worry about it. Now, what is this? Well, let's copy it and let's go to our code and let's just pop a comment in here. This is a really, really long URL and I'm okay putting this password in here because I'm going to delete the add-on as soon as I'm done with this video. So this is not going to help anyone. This is the user, this is the password, this is the host, and this is the database. Long, right? Confusing. We could manually split that up into these four fields. Not too hard, you know, we set this as db user, db pass, db host, and then db db. But we don't want to do that because again, Heroku rotates these. The password will change every so often and Heroku will auto update it, but your custom environment variables that you put in will not update. But there is another way. So we know this comes under clear db database URL. So what we can do is we can go in here and we can say, okay, well, if dot, if this key exists, then we're going to initialize SQLize a little differently. So let's do this here. And then we're going to say SQLize equals new SQLize. And all we do, we just pass that whole URL in as the only parameter to SQLize because it understands what that means. It can actually get all of this information from just that URL. But we still want to be able to use our existing um, environment variables. So what we can do is we can just put this in an else block. So what happens now is if this key exists on the system, which means that we're in Heroku and Heroku set this up, we utilize that to set up our database. If not, um, if that key doesn't exist, we fall back to the original four keys that we had to find, which means that our local development process hasn't changed. We can still have everything in .env. So that's how you handle up using, what is this? I don't need this, I think. Um, that's how you handle using a Heroku provided database. ClearDB is one of the options. There's a couple others, but they will all be the same. There'll be one parameter. So Ignite, I think, is another one, but that'll give you one parameter, it's the URL, and then you just do this similar process where you have, if that parameter exists, utilize it, otherwise fall back. All right, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna push that up. We say uh, commit message, allow clear DB URL. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, okay, git push Heroku. It's gonna build. I'm just going to pop over here and open up the logs again to watch it build. All right, starting to, oh, it crashed, yeah. Um, compressing, yeah, because I forgot the logs don't actually show the full build. Launching, okay, so now once it says launching, I can come back here. Got change from crash to starting, I'm start, okay. Um, invalid configure options, reconnect, we're not worried about that right now. Select table, blah, 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 create table that exists. This is good. This means that SQLize actually succeeded. Let's open our app again. Okay, well now it's thinking. It's like, hmm, I don't really know about this. I don't know about this application. And we're like, but the app is listening. What's, what's going on? What's the problem? Um, you might try to put port 3001. That is not the right option um, because that's not going to work. All right, so after a while, um, that I've, I've been waiting about two minutes, um, it crashes again, and it gives me an application error. And this is the interesting error right here. Boot timeout, web process failed to bind a port within 60 seconds of launch. It crashes, app crashed. So what does that mean? Well, Heroku has multiple processes running on each server. That's kind of how they, they handle their system. So your process starts up, you might not be running on your own server unless you purchased a really, really expensive plan where you have a dedicated server, but most of us have not purchased that plan, I'm sure. What that means is they actually want to control what port your process binds to. 
because they have they could have a hundred processes running on one machine and they're all different people's processes and they can't just let you decide what port to connect to because if you connect to port 3001 well what if everyone else wants to connect to that port too so they actually tell you what port to connect to and so we said hey we're listening on port 3001 well that's not the port that heroku assigned us and after 60 seconds they said hey you didn't bind to the port that we gave you. You didn't listen on that port. So we're just going to assume your application crashed. And whenever you actually try to go here, they're going to the port that they assigned, not the port that you decided. So how do we fix that? Well, if we go in here and we go to our server JS, see where we have port here? They will actually put their own port at process.m.port. So this is how you fix it. You say, okay, the port is this variable or 3001. And what that does is that says, if this environment variable does not exist, if there's nothing there, fall back to 3001. This again, preserves our local development and makes it so that that doesn't have to change. However, if we're on Heroku and they give us a port, then we use that instead. Okay, so we're gonna do again, we're gonna go here. Um, that changes, use Heroku port commit, and we'll push it again. Wait a minute for it to do its whole thing. Subsequent builds are often faster because they restore the cache for you if it hasn't changed, which is kind of nice. All right, compressing. Done launching. All right. So change from crash to starting. Let's just watch it start up again. Now you can say, you see app listening on port 51795. That's very different from port 3001. That is not at all the port that we gave it. So this is the Heroku port that they've provided. And now it works. Look at that. All right. So let's, uh, let's create a new user. I'm just going to create a test user here. Sign up. Page isn't working. I got a 500 issue immediately. Well, why? This worked fine on my local machine. Well, let's check the logs. Okay. Ah, look at this. Insert into users. Error. Secret or private key must have a value. At module exports, JSON web token sign.js. APIs users JS 17. Well, APIs. Okay. User JS 17. Ah, so this is when we do the JWT sign. And here's the issue. When if you run into something like this, where it says secret or private key must have a value, that means that this value is empty. Well, how could that possibly be? It's coming from the process env, right? It is. But we had to set that key manually here. And we haven't, oops, we haven't set it in Heroku. So what we're going to do is we actually have to come back here to settings, config variables, and we have to add a new config variable, JWT key. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to, um, I'm actually just going to generate a random password. Let's see, not, uh, does this one, is this going to do what I want? Let's just see, customize my password. Let's do a really long one. All right. And let's copy that because you want this to be relatively, um, secure for uh, a JWT secret. So we put that in there, we paste that key value, and then once you click add, Heroku is actually going to redeploy your application and restart it. So if you go and you see it's restarting because whenever it changed the process environment, it wants to try again. All right, it's up, and then let's go back here, and then let's try test two. To. If I actually had a login API, I would try to log in, but I didn't build one. And now there we are. Now I go to welcome home. I see in the logs, no errors. I just have that insert. And if I look in my uh, application, I can see I have my session token, which is now being properly created and validated. I know it's been validated because I got to the home page and my auth middleware is checking that. So. Those are three of the most common issues I see people running into when they're first doing Heroku deployments and how to solve them. Um, if you have any others, please let me know. I would uh, love to hear about them and maybe I'll do another video explaining those as well if a bunch show up. Anyway, I'll see you all in class.